they wanted was somebody on the back of a white stallion. They wanted a new king who would reign over them and who would bring them the spoils due to a victor. But this whole scene, this whole scenario was really different than that because what we see is set in the context, folks, of peace. Jesus said these words as he wept over the city. He said, would that even today you knew the things that make for peace. Well, you know what? Those folks were not remotely interested in peace. They wanted power. So they didn't receive him. They refused to recognize him. They wouldn't welcome him into their city and into their lives. What did they do? What did they do? They tried to figure out a way to crucify him. Well, let's come back to our time and the current situation in Israel. And there are several million Christians among all of those Arab people. And in that land today, Jesus and his followers are still rejected. They're denied. They're pushed out. They're pushed even into refugee camps. And they're told, you do not belong on this land. And here we are asking the same question. Will there ever be peace? And Jesus says to us, would that even today you knew the things that make for peace. Now we can't assume that that term this day refers only to back then or over there. It's also about our present day when we live because you and I and all of humanity is confronted by this man Jesus who humbly comes into our presence not riding on a donkey but I guarantee you he comes into our lives and the lives of others in such unexpected ways and when he shows up then we have to decide what are we going to do with him and it's all based on our preconception of who he is and what it is we need you know it's easy to write off this man Jesus he comes humbly lowly but he comes in peace it's easy it's easy to write him off when what we think we need is power we need money we might need a miracle drug or the right person or a friend or maybe we need an event to happen that will make everything perfectly fine but that's not it and people continue to deny Jesus and they reject Jesus and people still ask the question that was asked back then what can he do but then there are others the others that joined us coming down the aisle the others that joined Christians all over the world today in that ancient procession that began so long ago right outside the gates of Jerusalem where we shout Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest save us Lord what we do as we came forth wasn't simply remembering an event that took place in history in the life of Jesus what we're doing is reminding ourselves that in reality the human condition hasn't changed much at all over the last 2,000 years. The context that we find ourselves has changed. But we still know, we're aware of our dire need of a deliverer. We need a Messiah. We need one who can save. And yet still so many, because of their preconceptions, about who or what they need or the strategy that should be used 
They refuse to hear it and refuse to believe that Jesus brings good news or peace. And folks, here's the problem. We live in a generation and we live in a culture which is always looking for a quick fix. We think that what we need is just the right candidate and everything will be hunky-dory in America again. We think that what we need is a brand new miracle drug that will wipe disease off the face of the earth. We think that what we need is money for a new loan and we then can get a new start. We think that what we need is just the right person in our lives. We think that what we need is something to fix us quick. But what the lesson says to us today is that what we need isn't a quick fix. What we need is a faith in someone who can save us. So the gospel says that somehow, in some way, as unbelievable as it may seem, this same humble, lowly, riding on a burrow Jesus is not a symbol of weakness, but it's a, repre a representative of the power who can give us peace and can save us. And when we realize that, then we've got a decision to make. We've got to decide what are we going to do with him? Crucify him? Or crown him. Isaiah said the words I said a moment ago. He who vindicates us is near. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Save us, Lord. We were part a moment ago of the ongoing procession. We will be a part until we lie down for the last time. So I say to you this morning, what do you say? Do you trust him. Let us pray. Jesus, you just keep coming. Help us to recognize you for who you are and who sent you. And to acknowledge that you and you alone are our hope and our salvation. Oh, Jesus, send us your power. Send us your love. Send us your grace so that we may find the peace that you have for us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.